Dear friends, I hope you all are doing well. This is Biju Ramachandran. I want to share another book summary and practical tips for all busy people who don't get much free time to read books and those who don't like reading non-fiction books. Thank you so much for your support and personal feedback. Again, please forgive my poor language, voice and technology skills. However, I sincerely hope the content is excellent and beneficial. Today, I'll be talking about the classic self-help book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey studied the success ideas in America and its evolution going back for 200 years. This included many books, magazine articles, thousands of sources either directly or indirectly. He noticed a pattern emerging. He looked for evidence and found evidence everywhere. The finding was this, for the first 150 years, Almost the entire focus of the success literature was on character and principles and what we might call the character ethic. Attributes such as integrity, honesty, courage, compassion, contribution, responsibility, justice, etc. Then, maybe because of many societal forces, the emphasis gradually shifted in the early 1900s particularly in the 20s and 30s, away from the character ethic to what we might call the personality ethic, which focused more on techniques than principles. These findings became the basis for writing the seven habits of highly effective people. We are very familiar with many books that illustrate the literature of personality ethic. They basically deal with how to take care of yourself, how to look good, how to dress well, how to create right image, right impression, etc. In other words, the personality ethics focuses on how to appear than actually to be. Let's take a mo moment, focus on what's really happening. The personality ethic is like the tip of an iceberg, which others see on the surface. The character ethic is like great mass of iceberg under the water. People often do work on the foundation where the great masses were the most significant long-term impact is. But unfortunately, too many people give all the energy to the tip of the iceberg focused on learning techniques that others can see. You can see this even in organizations, not just individuals. But we should never forget this universal law. Programs change, practices change, peoples change, but principles, they don't change. If we help individuals and organizations internalize correct or timeless principles, they will know how to adapt the practices to address specific situations. This concept applies to our lives, our families and our children too. Stephen Covey agrees that many of these techniques have real merit. They are essential. We want good human relation techniques, communication skills and management skills, but he wants that if these techniques don't have roots in the character ethic and timeless principles, they won't have the power to create enduring effectiveness and success. Once Dr. Covey began his address with an illustrative story embodying the thesis of his presentation. It was a dark and stormy night. Crew member, Captain, Captain, wake up. Captain, well, crew member, sorry to wake you, sir, but we have a serious problem. Captain. Well, what is it? Crew member, there is a ship in our sea lane about 20 miles away and they refuse to move. Captain, what do you mean they refuse to move? Just tell them to move. Crew member, sir, we have told them they will not move. Captain, I will tell them. The signal goes out, move starboard 20 degrees. The signal returns, move starboard yourself 20 degrees. Captain, I can't believe this. Well, I mean, I'm a captain. Let them know who I am. I am important. The signal goes out. This is Captain Horatio Hornblower, 26, commanding you to move starboard 20 degrees at once. Signal returns. This is Seaman Carl Jones, 2, commanding you to move starboard 20 degrees at once. Captain, what arrogance. I mean, what presumption. Here is a seaman commanding me a captain. We could just blow them right out of the water. We could just let them know who we are. Signal goes out. This is the mighty Missouri, flagship of the 7th Fleet. The signal returns. This is the lighthouse. That's a true story. It is found in the Naval Proceedings magazine where a lighthouse was literally interpreted as a ship. 
this story teaches that there are lighthouse principles that cannot be violated with impunity. For instance, if a person or even a child steps off a building, he will be governed by gravity and natural law and fall. This is definite, even if they are aware of the law or not. So we have to live with the lighthouse principles. We don't break them. We only break ourselves against them because these are universal and timeless principles. The seven habits are about the inside out approach, meaning we give our first energy to our own character development before learning techniques on how to be more effective with others. Stephen Covey continues, Gandhi beautifully demonstrated this principle once. A mother visited with her son and requested, would you help with my child reduce the amount of sugar he is eating? Gandhi paused, stopped, finally answered, well, I'll talk to him in a week. A week later, the mother came again with her son and asked. And Gandhi advised the boy and the boy agreed. Then the mother asked, why did you not talk with him last week? Gandhi smiled and said, you don't understand. Last week, I too was eating sugar. That was an example of practicing what you preach. That is being true to yourself, being congruent. That is why Gandhiji wrote in his autobiography, I have nothing new to teach the world. Truth and non-violence are as old as hills. My life is my message. Stephen Covey summarizes this whole 350 plus page book in this picture. You can see habits scattered, one, two, three, then four, five, six, and finally the seventh on the outer circle. We can also read dependence, independence, and interdependence. Also private victory and private, uh, public victory. The structure is organized in a particular way for a reason. They are all interrelated. The relationships and the sequence among the habits are the key to their overall power. Let us define these three terms briefly. Dependence basically means you need others to get what you want. In your early life as an infant, we were entirely dependent. That is normal. Sometimes in the latter part, we may be emotionally dependent on other people's affirmation and validation of us. Dependence is the attitude of you. You take care of me. If you don't and I fail, I blame you for the results. Independence means you're pretty much free from the external influence, control and support of others. I think, I act for myself, I'm self-directed, I'm self-reliant. Independence is the attitude of I, I can do it and I'm responsible. True independence of character empowers us to act rather than be acted upon. Interdependence. This is a far more mature, more advanced level, the third and highest level in the maturity continuum. Independence is the attitude of we. Interdependence is where we can cooperate to combine our talents or abilities to our best efforts to achieve our highest success. Stephen Covey warns, until you and I are independent, we cannot be interdependent. We cannot run before we learn to walk. We can't learn to work cooperatively with other people if you don't have internal self-mastery. That's why the first three habits, be proactive, begin with the end in mind, and put first things first, deals with self-mastery, self-control, and self-dominion. They form the deepest part of our character, the private victory, the victory of self. To lead others effectively, we must be able to lead ourselves effectively. Habits think win-win, seek first to understand, then to be understood, and synergy will help us in our relationships with other people, enabling us to succeed with people. Therefore, habits four, five, and six forms the public victory. Effectiveness with others is based on teamwork, cooperation, and communication. Habits four, five, and six utilize our personality. They are skill-based and they lead us from independence to interdependence. That is the attitude of we.
where we cooperate to accomplish the desired result. Looking back, I can't believe that I read this book first 24 years ago. But please don't think it is because I was far ahead in my reading. Reading this book was sort of a punishment. During my videos internship, I had a minor argument with a young assistant professor. I am from a small village. I was naive, short term, burden foolish. That night I had a knock on my college hostel room door. That intelligent assistant professor who was a hostel warden was standing there. He handed me a book and told me firmly, Biju, read it. It was the seven habits of highly effective people. I really struggled through the initial part and almost stopped reading. But persevered, somehow finished the book, then bought one and reread it. I shall tell that story later. For me, reading this book was a paradigm shift. A person who loved fiction, Tolstoy and reading books for entertainment started liking non-fiction and self-help books and continue to do so. It had a domino effect. As a result, my world we changed, my attitude changed and I think I changed. Coming to the point, to understand this book better, we should know what a paradigm and paradigm shift is. It is a frequently used word in this book. To define it, it's a pattern or model. It can be a view of something, others, world, etc. It can be accurate, but many a time they are just assumptions and inaccurate. For example, a wrong map, a wrong worldview, a wrong view or belief about others. Anything we have accepted without fact checking. But when we take time and effort to look for the truth or when the fact appears, a paradigm shift happens. We gain the freedom to see things, people and the world in a new light. It's like changing a pair of wrong or faulty glasses. For some, the paradigm shift can be significant, almost like a mini enlightenment. That is my understanding of the word paradigm and the concept. Now, please look at that picture on the screen. I'm sure many of you would have seen this famous picture from this book. How many of you saw a young lady in this picture? How many of you saw an old lady in this picture? And how many of you saw both? Dr. Stephen Covey studied MBA and had a PhD. He was a professor and taught at Utah, Brigham and Harvard universities. He was one of the most sought after consultants by Fortune 100, 500 companies and top CEOs. Dr. Covey was chosen as one of the top 25 influential people of the century by the Time magazine. This book was one of the most influential books in my life. Of course, I'm not suggesting this book will be life changing for you, but definitely worth checking. This book has sold over 25 million copies since 1989. This book is a gold mine. This book is for personal development. This book is for organizational growth. This book is a good guide for management and leadership. This book deals with family relations and marital issues. This book is an excellent guide if you struggle to deal with a teenager. Kovi was a father of nine and grandfather of 55. Overall, this book is one of the best self-help books of all time. Those who read it, I'm sure you'll agree with me. I can explain this whole book in a single short video. It will not do justice to this book and you. So I shall do it in two more videos. Before concluding, I have a request. Please watch video by Stephen Covey explaining the concept of paradigm and paradigm shift. I know how hard I try, lack the intelligence and ability to explain it well. The legend late Dr. Stephen Covey himself makes it clear with his beautiful presentation and stories. Please watch and enjoy. I shall continue in the following video. Till then, take care and thank you so much.